so that was a uh, yeah, especially because it, it takes some time, and then you could actually clearly we were very lucky that it was close to the road, so you mm-hmm. could actually follow well almost until it, it was chowed down all the way towards back legs, mm-hmm. which, which means it's over within mm-hmm. I don't know 30 seconds. So we see the, the the snake actually, you know, keeping track of it and trying to attack, but then also making sure it didn't get bitten back mm-hmm. by the uh, by the chameleon, and mm-hmm. the, the whole interaction it was very very fascinating to see that. Uh, so I hope, yeah. I think yeah, I, I, I didn't see. I didn't see all of it, but yeah. um, and, and and obviously I think the the first time experience you had there would have been awesome as well. Mm. Uh, but the, the one I enjoyed was when the chameleon was already, you know, you could see it was clearly on its way out now, mm. and it was, you know, it couldn't stand up properly and so on. And one stage the snake actually went for it again and it got it just sort of more on the side. Later mm. it got it in the neck, but the chameleon made it managed to twist and get its, you know, the chameleon have got those very special feet where they can grip really mm. hard twist and get his one foot around the snake's head and I saw it I mean the males were like almost in the snake's eye mm. and I, I don't know if it was necessarily planned I think at that stage the chameleon would be beyond really thinking if uh, whatever it could think yeah. but the snake immediately let go you could see that snake didn't yeah. want to take a chance yeah. of suddenly losing an eye because then the snake effectively yeah. so you know, that chameleon could even in the in its death throes could mm. still damage the snake potentially yeah. so yeah. It, it was amazing to see you know it, it, it seems less violent because it's smaller things mm. you know it's maybe not a lion jumping in a buffalo but yeah. you know, they're still having a, a battle there oh yeah and definitely it was, yeah. it was very yeah. very powerful and I was, I was actually very surprised that actually uh, it started eating the chameleon while it was still actually not completely dead yet you could mm. see it was still pretty it was actually because I always thought they, they would wait until mm. completely but I guess from the other side as, as long as soon as it can't offer any resistance anymore yeah. The faster it eats it, the less chance that anything else is going to run off yeah. with it or, or that something else happens. Yeah. So it was, yeah. That was the other thing as well, well is behavior that it looked like the snake to an extent. I mean, like you said, it was a very lucky setup, the, the situation yeah. of it. The fact that it wasn't open. If that was that far, you know, 10 centimeters further into the grass, you wouldn't see it. Yeah. It's a green exactly. chameleon and a green snake. Yeah. There's a little gecko again we saw the other day. See, they just, if you move your head slightly f- back a bit, stop there. Now, if you look on your shadow, so I don't know if you can get that. If you don't move your face, oh, yeah, yeah, see you it. see where your eyes would be on your shadow, basically. There's your... There. It's a... Uh, actually, I think your head might be just blocking it there on the shot, but if you move... Look at the tip of Pitt's finger, the shadow of his finger. Right there. Yeah. Our little gecko. <laughs> <laughs> he was here last time as well. Sorry, Pidgey, you weren't here last Sunday. <laughs> but last Sunday, we also, it took us a while to find him because mm. it's a tiny little, what is that? Oh. Um, so speaking of camouflage, the snake and the chameleon being green. Mm. But what I also saw is that the snake was very careful, obviously, of the chameleon. Mm. But uh, it, it could have easily come out and managed to get the chameleon from behind or something. But the sense I got was the snake was very aware of the fact that it does have cover in the, gr- in the grass. Oh, I think so, And it yeah. doesn't want to now because it's busy getting mm. caught up in catching the chameleon suddenly find a snake eel coming down and catching the snake. So it yeah. wanted to keep itself in cover as well the whole yeah. time. It was, it was an awesome, awesome sighting. Eh? Yeah, because because actually, I l- when I looked back, I think it, 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 it bit it on the road while the chameleon was still on the road. And then, maybe because we came up, it, it, it went into the bush. Mm. And then I just waited there for the chameleon. You, can, you don't see the snake at first, but you see the chameleon walking in. Mm. And then suddenly you see something moving. And then yeah, they suddenly like And then actually Rexion managed to move forward a little bit, so we got mm. a, a better view of it. But yeah, that was uh, fascinating stuff. Yeah, no, that was very cool. Yeah, that's that's really probably a once in a lifetime thing that you could catch something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, but who knows? Me, yeah. Who knows? Oh, it's all about know, spending time yeah. in the bush, and things will happen at some point. Well, I mean, like I mean, I heard Rex and say it as well, and and, and I, I can say I, I don't think I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever seen a worm slung eat anything. Hmm. I've seen a few things eat frogs a few times, bush snakes and so on. But yeah, I mean, you could spend a lifetime and not see it. No. Yeah. So it it was a special thing. Yeah. Well, Peter, I'm sure you've heard the question twice already. I just <laughs> to pose it again, Tony's question. Yeah. Um, has your time at we changed you? And, and, and well, uh, first of all, I think no one would have said no. Imagine someone just sat you and said no. I feel exactly the same as before. Yeah. <laughs> but has your time at we changed you? The environment and, and how that has affected you, and anything that would make camp more comfortable. A big yeah. generator. Well, well, about the changing. Maybe, maybe my view is a bit different than others. Because I think your whole, you basically your makeup or the way the way you are doesn't really change. But you get new yeah. experiences oh, course, and. Yeah. and and, yeah, and for that you get probably you get richer from from those experiences. But I think your basic makeup is something that, like you have. Uh, yeah. So I agree with you that. Yeah. Pete, sorry, not, not to interrupt on this. We are sort of leaving people to answer it by themselves. But uh, I think to a large extent, and that's something we talk about often with with mm. everyone coming in uh, when they're new, and 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 it's something I would encourage everyone that is here as new people come in. One of the big things we really encourage people is to really just be themselves. You know, mm. you know, I always go yeah. on about sustainability. It is not sustainable to to keep your to, to change your personal makeup 
you know, it, it's sustainable for a week or a month or two, but over a long period of time, it is just too hard. So yeah. I, I think even more so than another working environment is that, uh, anyway, I just like the point you made there. Yeah, no, but as I said, yeah, you, you do get lots of experiences and being, being thrown into something new is always very interesting for me, at, at least, because you learn lots of new stuff, so you, yeah, you, you grow in a, in a sense. And uh, things that surprised me, basically, and maybe that's something that would, I would look at is, is the amount of technology that was here. I was actually, I was literally thinking, because I had watched um, Wild Earth and, and Graham's earliest projects uh, before, even when I was back in Kuwait five, six years ago, I was an avid watcher of that. But I always thought, actually, even now with the with the moving things, that there was there was just a height close to a <laughs> cl close to the waterhole with somebody actually physically sitting in there with the, with the video camera, a bit like Simon sitting yeah. now, and then moving that, and then somehow there's a little cable and connects to the internet. That was actually, I, I never really thought about it, but mm. that was my impression. So then, when I came here, I thought, oh, okay, there's, <laughs> a, there's a bit more <laughs> to it. There are <laughs> things in between. <laughs> to it than that, and microwave transmissions and stuff. I, I, I never actually even, even probably heard about those things and, and stuff like that. And So it's quite, for, for me also, being interested in technology to see see that part as well, as, as well, of course, as being, you know, out here in, inside one of, uh, one of the great game reserves and, and just, yeah, just being able to walk out a little bit, of course, you know, watching where you go, but you know, walking out or driving out and having animals coming in camp, and uh, yeah, that's mm. just, that's fascinating. And so, yeah, it's, it's changed me. It definitely gave me a lot of new experiences and, and still, I think, ways to think about what, what I actually want to achieve or do with my life. Yeah, as, as, as some people know, I've, oh, I used to be a chemical engineer. I guess technically I still am, but... <coughs> <laughs> not, pra not, not practicing, as they say, <laughs> and and that will always stay that way. But yeah, of course, at some point you need to find something else that you you want to do and, and have a passion for. And yeah, I think that this could definitely be that. Uh, mm. So, but yeah, f future will future will tell, obviously. So yeah, yeah, maybe a bit of a different answer. And then no, I I it's, yeah. it's an interesting answer in the, in the sense that I think again that's something that's very interesting. Um, Again, I've given it, you know, obviously a lot of these things, a lot of thought over time, but it's, um, in a way, it's almost better. I mean, we've seen a lot of people come and go over time now as well, uh, relatively a lot. I think we'll still see a lot more <laughs> over the next few years. But uh, in a way, it's, it's, it's the more I realize it, the more it's almost better to have people with not necessarily a big television broadcasting background mm. because it is so outside of the box of what typically is expected of, of these kind of things. <clears throat> and, it, and it's certainly shown that people can come from any kind of walk of life and, and find something interesting here. So, so once you get here, there's the basics you get used to. You know, there's animals running around like that cockroach, or whatever that was. It's not a cockroach. It's a, some kind of a insect. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's all that happening. But, but also people find within that certain niches that they that, that they enjoy. And I mean, I saw that from the from the probably the first or the second day you were here, yeah. is that you know your your interest obviously from the engineering background from the. The, the, the technical understanding of things it was fascinating and it's, it's interesting that people can come here and, and they can find oh well you know there's certain aspects I enjoy more you know we all enjoy the wildlife I think mm. if you were out here and yeah. you didn't enjoy wildlife then, then you <laughs> obviously should rethink things a little bit you know if you were out here thinking yeah I miss you know the city and all the things around it uh, you know and, and I don't like the animals and I don't like the sound and I don't like the fact mm. that you get rain and you get wet when it's raining then it's wrong for you. But but once you get here, there are so many different aspects on all different levels, and and, and not just on a on a physical level, but also on, on, on social levels and, and and the sort of ability to communicate and yeah. understand all those things that, that that makes it interesting for for a lot of different people. You know, we spoke about it a while a little bit. You know, just mm. we touched on it, but you know, maybe down the line, Renee. You know, I'm sure Renee. I, I could see that she loves it, Archie. And and there's so many possibilities for people from all walks of life to come here and actually enjoy it. And, and actively partake in it as well. Mm. In other words, find something and say, hey, well, I can do this, and I find it fascinating and get into it. And, uh, and, and you've certainly showed that in many ways as well. Yeah. How was the first part? Uh, how about comfort? Yes, <laughs> the loaded question. <laughs> ah. Ah, well, I'm, I'm, not <coughs> I'm not one that really needs a lot of, lot of comfort, which is, I guess, a good thing. But, <laughs> yeah. but that doesn't mean, of course, that a couple of things... Uh, I think Lucian mentioned also, I, I do like... I always I'd like to take a bath rather than a shower and just once in a while I just sit and read and at 45 minutes, an hour or sometimes even longer until the water gets cold and <laughs> so that's something that, that yeah that I can't typically do here but okay then we do get to sweat and swim in Buffalo Dam once in a while so that's, yeah. a <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing uh, probably not for a while now now him goes back but <laughs> so 